Good morning and welcome to the United Benefice Service of Holy Communion for this Sunday the 6th of September, the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. We worship with Christians near and far, living and departed, old and young. God's word is for all of us. May it be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we say our opening prayer together. Lord, Lord speak, speak to, to us, us that, that we, we may, may hear your word. word. Move, Move among us, us that, that we, we may behold, behold your, your glory. glory. Receive our prayers, that we may learn to trust you. Amen. And as we listen to our opening music, let us reflect on the past week, on the things that we have said and thought and done that we regret, and on, on the things that we have failed to say or do or think. In our sin, we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you and upon me. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The Collect for today. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you. Through him who were lifted up on the cross, and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This reading is taken from Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. 
how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 20. Glory to you, O Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Praise to you, O Lord. This morning we're continuing with our sermon series on the book of Romans. Only one more to go before we, we begin our series on Paul's letter to the Philippians. This may come as a great relief to some of you, or perhaps a disappointment that we aren't continuing right to the end. If the latter, then I suggest that you can carry on and just read the rest of the book for yourselves. Well, in his sermon last week, Marcus expressed relief to be preaching on one of the more straightforward passages, rather than one of the more involved and convoluted passages from earlier in the book. And this morning, I share his relief. In fact, today's passage continues the message of loving others, treating all people with respect, acting towards them in a just and compassionate way. And in between the readings for this week and last comes a passage in which Paul speaks of the requirement of Christians to submit to the governing authorities. Well, that message might be rather controversial, but it does end with Paul's instruction to pay our taxes to ensure that we always give everything we might owe to anyone else, whether it be taxes or revenue or respect and honour. And Paul then continues, Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Well, the teaching on paying taxes echoes Jesus' response to the Pharisees who asked him if it was right to pay taxes to Caesar. Taxes have never been too popular, have they? And there may well have been Christians in Rome who believe that their faith absolved them from paying taxes to the pagan Roman authorities. But Paul makes it clear that however galling it might be, they have to pay their dues. Christianity isn't an excuse for refusing our obligations to other people. Instead, it's a reason for fulfilling them to the utmost, for reasons that we'll find later on in this passage. Paul then echoes Jesus' words about the law and love that we found in Matthew chapter 22. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. But why should Paul speak of having a debt to love one another? Well, the third century B 
biblical scholar Oregon said, the debt of love remains with us permanently and never leaves us. This is a debt we both discharge every day and forever owe. As Christians, we're called firstly to love God, and then our love for God and for others is a response to God's love for us. As St John tells us, we love because God first loved us. And God's love is revealed to us through Jesus, who died on the cross so that we could know God's forgiveness and come into a loving relationship with God. This is a debt that we can never repay and that we forever owe. And surely that should motivate us to love others. It's through loving others that we demonstrate our love for God. As Paul teaches, if we truly do our best to discharge this debt of love, then we shall automatically fulfil all the commandments, because these commandments are based around love for God and love for others. Loving others in the way God requires us means respecting the rights and needs of, of other people. St Augustine famously said, love God and do what you like, which is actually totally opposed to the idea of having free reign to do whatever feels good at the time. The emphasis is first and foremost on loving God. And William Barclay writes, if Christians honestly seek to discharge this debt of love, they will not commit adultery. So when two people allow their physical passions to sweep them away, the reason is not that they love each other too much, but that they love each other too little. In real love, there is at the same time respect and restraint, which saves us from sin. They will not kill, for love never seeks to destroy, but to build up. They will never steal, for love is always more concerned with giving than with getting. All this sounds pretty straightforward, but, and there's always a but, as with many things in life, it's far more easily said than done. However, Paul goes on to expand on the kind of things that Christians should avoid if they're to live a life pleasing to God. He exhorts his readers, and do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. And of course, we often hear this passage at services during Advent when we're looking ahead to Christ's second coming. And although many in the early church expected Christ's imminent return, Tom Wright believes that Paul didn't necessarily subscribe to this view. Here, he was expounding on the teaching that we find in chapter 12. Paul contrasts the lifestyle and morals of the present age with those of the new age that has already broken in through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. The light of Christ has come into the world, and where there is light, the darkness is exposed and shown up for what it really is. Most people may be content to go with the flow, to adopt whatever attitudes are fashionable and acceptable at the time, but Christians are to live in a different way. In the night time, Maybe it's possible to get away with drunkenness, carousing and such things. And of course, in our larger times, we might come across people who clearly have too much to drink and are in a state which they'd be ashamed of in the cold light of day. Paul says we're to always behave decently, as in the daytime. We're to refrain from any behaviour in the dark, when we think that nobody can see us and know what's going on, that we'd be ashamed of being brought into the light. Paul's message is to wake up, recognise what's happening, recognise that we might have become complacent about the way we behave, we might congratulate ourselves that we're not indulging in carousing, drunkenness, sexual immorality or debauchery, but add to that list dissension and jealousy, and can we honestly say that we never come across such things in our churches? even in our own lives. When we wake up in the morning, one of the first things we do is to get dressed. Then we might throw open the curtains and let in the light. Paul tells us that we're to put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. In the same way that we decide which clothes are appropriate to wear for the business of the day, we have to make that decision 
to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Tom Wright says, The clothing we need when the light begins to shine consists of Jesus himself, Jesus the Lord, Jesus the King. I know some Christians who in their private devotions each day make a conscious effort in prayer to clothe themselves with the very character of Jesus. Some people do this by reading slowly a story from the Gospels and praying that the character of Jesus they meet there will surround them, protect them and be the first thing that people see when they meet them. Well, as Tom Wright suggests, it really is a good idea to begin our day with prayer, to read a passage of scripture, however short, to ask for God's help to guide us and to help us behave in a way that demonstrates our love for God and leads us to show his love to those around us. And here perhaps we should consider what Paul means by love. It certainly isn't the romantic kind of love that that word often brings to mind in our present time. No, Paul's referring to the kind of unselfish love that first considers the needs of others, that isn't demanding or jealous, but that's willing to speak out against what is clearly wrong. And at first sight, what Jesus asks of us in our Gospel reading may not appear to be very loving, but then it all depends on our motives. Surely, it's far better to speak gently to someone, to make the effort to be reconciled with them, than to turn away from them in resentment, to seek revenge, or to start a destructive gossip campaign that sometimes happens. And the final words of our Gospel reading remind us of the importance of coming together to pray, being open to Jesus' presence with us through his Holy Spirit, so that our prayers are guided by him and in line with God's will. So perhaps this week's challenge for us is to consider how we are to stay awake, how we are to put on the armour of light, how we are to be willing to do all that we can to shine that light into the darkness in a way that demonstrates our commitment to paying our continuing debt of love. At a time when many are anxious and afraid of the future, are there things that we can do to help? If there's nothing practical we can do, then we can always offer a listening ear, a commitment to pray. Maybe we can start by praying each day to be clothed in Christ's love, peace and compassion, and to become more like him. So let's pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Lord, thank you for our clergy, Chris, Becky and Marcus, and laity, Rob, Barney and Ollie. We pray for your blessings upon them as they continue to guide, to guide us in our journey towards you. We remember our government and all people in positions of power or authority. May the decisions they make be right and just and filled with compassion. Heavenly Father, thank you for the lavish love you have poured out on us. We pray that your grace flows from us to our neighbours as we try and fulfil our debts to you. Help us to take care of ourselves in order to help others. Clothe us in the light of your love to see that our fellow humans are fed, clothed and housed as well as they can be. And give us the courage to stand up for social justice as we, we remember all who live with the threat of war, tyranny and natural disasters. Also remembering your witnesses who provide help and assistance in our own small corner of the world. And we say thank you to CAP and the Food Bank. 
Lord, help us to stay strong when all around there is evidence of indifference, apathy and corruption towards our fellow humankind. We thank you, Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, for showing us the way to your truth through love, humility and service. As we go out in your strength to serve your people, may the armour of your love radiate from us so, we, so all who may come to know your goodness. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We, we believe, believe in God the Father, Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The risen Lord came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace, or pray for the peace of those who live around you. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home. 
to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the sun in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks and broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And so as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share one in our bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart, by faith, with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us, 
with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray. How Final prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Some notices for next week. Next week, the 13th of September, we have services in four of our churches. We have a service of Holy Communion at 10 o'clock from St. Swithin's Cheswood Eye. And then we have family services in the other churches at 9.30 in Sambrook, the village service, 10.30 at Stoke-on-Turn, Cafe Church, and 4 o'clock in St. Michael's Child's Arkle, family worship. And also to tell you that next Saturday, the 12th of September, is our Ride and Stride. And this year it will again be shared with the Historic Churches Trust. Donations will be going to the, that trust and to each of the churches. The Historic Churches Trust is something that actually helps a lot of our churches. We can get funding from them for various repairs and things that need to happen. So if you'd like to take part in that, do look out for the advertisements. There will be forms available. Our final hymn is now, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee.
May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, ever creating, redeeming and sustaining, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Lovely. Right.